Come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O come, let us worship God and bow low before the God who made us, for he is the Lord our God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Uh, so welcome to Mass on Tuesday in the fifth week of ordinary time. And we're offering our Mass for the repose of the soul of Noreen Cornus. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let the perpetual light shine upon her. May she rest in peace. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are the image of the unseen God. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You are the firstborn of all creation. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are the head of the body, the church. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, they may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said, Let the waters teem with living creatures, and let birds fly above the earth within the vault of heaven. And so it was. God created great sea serpents and every kind of living creature with which the waters teem and every kind of winged creature. God saw that it was good. God blessed them saying, be fruitful, multiply and fill the waters of the seas and let the birds multiply upon the earth Evening came, and morning came, the fifth day. <coughs> God said, Let the earth produce every kind of living creature, cattle, reptiles, and every kind of wild beast. And so it was. God made every kind of wild beast, every kind of cattle, and every kind of land reptile. God saw that it was good. God said, let us make man in our own image, in the likeness of ourselves, and let them be masters of the fish of the sea, the birds of heaven, the cattle, all the wild beasts, and all the reptiles that crawl upon the earth. God created man in the image of himself. In the image of God he created him. Male and female he created them. God blessed them, saying to them, Be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth and conquer it. Be masters of the fish of the sea, <coughs> the birds of heaven, and all living animals on the earth. God said, See, I give you all the seed-bearing plants that, upon the, that are upon the whole earth, and all the trees with seed-bearing fruit. This shall be your food. To all wild beasts, all birds of heaven, and all living reptiles on the earth, I give all the foliage of plants for food. And so it was. God saw all he had made, and indeed it was very good. Evening came, and morning came, the sixth day. Thus heaven and earth were completed with all their array. On the seventh day, God completed the work he had been doing. He rested on the seventh day after all the work he had been doing. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on that day he had rested after all his work of creating. Such were the origins of heaven and earth when they were created. 
the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. How great is your name, O Lord our God, through all the earth. How great is your name, O Lord our God, through all the earth. When I see the heavens, the work of your hands, the moon and the stars which you arranged, what is man that you should keep him in mind? Mortal man, that you care for him. How great is the name of the Lord our God through all the earth. Yet you have made him little less than a God. With glory and honour you crowned him, gave him power over the works of your hand, put all things under his feet. How great is the name of the Lord our God through all the earth. All of them, sheep and cattle, yes, even the savage beasts, Birds of the air and fish that make their way through the waters. How great is the name of the Lord our God through all the earth. Alleluia. and some of the scribes who had come from Jerusalem gathered round Jesus and they noticed that some of his disciples were eating with unclean hands, that is, without washing them. For the Pharisees and the Jews in general follow the tradition of the elders and never eat without washing their arms as far as the elbow. And on returning from the marketplace, they never eat without first sprinkling themselves. There are also many other observances which have been handed down to them concerning the washing of cups and pots and bronze dishes. So these Pharisees and scribes asked him, Why do your disciples not respect the tradition of the elders, but eat their food with unclean hands? He answered, It was of you hypocrites that Isaiah so rightly prophesied in this passage of scripture. This people honours me only with lip service while their hearts are far from me. The worship they offer me is worthless. The doctrines they teach are only human regulations. You put aside the commandments of God to cling to human traditions. And he said to them, how ingeniously you get round the commandments of God in order to preserve your own tradition. For Moses said, do your duty to your father and mother, and anyone who curses father or mother must be put to death. But you say, if a man says to his father or mother, anything I have that I might have used to help you is Corbin, that is dedicated to God, then he is forbidden from that moment to do anything for his father or mother. In this way you make God's word null and void for the sake of your tradition, which you have handed down, and you do many other things like this. The Gospel of the Lord. of man is a special and significant moment. The phrase, let us make, might imply an action of the Trinity, wishing to draw humanity into their communion of persons. At the very least, it implies the greatness and power of God, who wishes to share his divine nature with humanity whom he loves. At the end of every day, God looks back on his creation and sees that it is good. But when he looks back after the creation of man, he sees that it is very good. The phrase man, while not being politically correct these days, <coughs> does have a collective meaning that every human being is made in the image and likeness of God. Male and female, he created them. Jesus would later imply that God created our first parents and placed them in a form 
of early marriage, challenging a modern interpretation that marriage is merely a social construct. And again later, by his presence at Cana, Jesus would elevate this natural marriage to the dignity of a sacrament, so that it would always be, for a Christian, an image of Christ and the Church. Our intellect and our will, our capacity for relationship, marks humanity out from other creatures. And that, that only makes sense when we reference God as our creator. Otherwise, perhaps, we would just be an apex predator, a hunter-killer. A bit like my brother's cat. <laughs> <coughs> the creation of man marks the completion of creation. And we may rightly see humanity at the pinnacle of all that God has created. Our dominion um, over creation demands respect for what God has created. And although the earth may be at our service, we will have to give an account of our stewardship. This likeness of God in whom we have been created it is for now spiritual, found in our souls, enlightened by holy baptism. The resurrection implies, however, that we will later have a glorified body like Jesus when the kingdom is finally <coughs> established in its fullness. God's revelation, which we know has two channels, scripture and tradition, makes God's present presence felt, drawing us back to him with all our heart. This will be the call in a couple of weeks' time when we begin Lent on Ash Wednesday. This likeness of God is lost when we commit serious sin, but it is restored through the power of the cross, baptism, reconciliation, and in minor cases, through the Eucharist as well. If we are to share in the communion of persons who are the Trinity, we must begin to live in communion with one another in this world. And so the unity of Christians remains an important aspect of our mission. And our mission is important. Now that God has completed creation, humanity is called to work the land and bring the fruits of creation back to him. The institution of the Sabbath is important because it allows people time to rest, to have sufficient energy to cultivate their family, cultural, social and religious lives, so to better reflect the image and likeness of God in whom they have been created. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruits of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray 
say, my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands under the grace and glory of his name. For our Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that we may become they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. Be lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity, dwelling in unapproachable light. Yet you who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessing and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face, glorify you without ceasing. With them we too confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest, blessed is he, who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great, and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care, so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death. For you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants, and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Saviour, made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation, to prisoners freedom, and to the sorrowful <coughs> heart joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death, and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for whom, him who died and rose for, again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these gifts, that they may become the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of this great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end, and while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which shall be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, Lord, and profess your resurrection, and see you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church, 
and grant that in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that are gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant Francis, our Pope, Richard, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, all the clergy, those who take part in this offering, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a merciful Father, that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, the blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death, may we glorify you through Christ our Lord, for whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. First Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign for ever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. <laughs> Lamb of God, you take the greatest sins of the world, but have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take the greatest sins of the world, but have mercy on us. The whole Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. O Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter my home, but only say the word, and my soul shall be Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul and the hungry he fills with good things.
Let us pray. <coughs> o God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live, that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. <coughs> Let you know on Friday uh, morning what the plan for the weekend is. Do check the online newsletter when it goes up at lunchtime and our Facebook page. <coughs> there is a hint from the BBC forecast this morning that the temperature is going to climb a little bit at the weekend. The church at the moment is only 8 degrees. It's sort of kind of sucked in all that cold mm. air and it's going to kind of stay there for a while. Um, you don't really want to be in there um, very long. You'll come out of it really, really shivering. Um, our next Mass in the parish, of course, is Thursday evening here at half past six in the presbytery, and then again Friday morning at ten o'clock, and the Saturday morning Mass will also be here at uh, ten o'clock. I, I think we're going to end up with a few more weeks of disruption, I'm afraid. Uh, the only Mass we're not celebrating then at the moment is the 11. I appreciate it is the most popular Mass <laughs> in terms of numbers, uh, but we're doing what we can. Um, the manufacturer said we won't get an update now in part before the end of February. So it's, a, it's either parts or spring come first. I suspect it's spring. Mm -hmm. The Lord be with you. Amen. 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 God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen.